Right off the bat, I believe that Busy Bone is one of the greatest rappers of all times. He's one of my top three favorite rappers of all times. Him, Crazy Bone, Tupac, definitely. I've been listening to this guy since I was a little kid, man. Watching some of his recent interviews, he talks about a lot of esoteric occult knowledge. He sprinkles stuff throughout his music and talking about the Ouija board and aliens and UFOs and things like this. So I wanted to have him on the show to go into detail about some of these subjects, which he's kind of touched on in other interviews, but I wanted to elaborate and go into some of those details. So many of the questions that I ask him may seem out of left field, but they are from notes that I have taken from other interviews with him, you know, sprinkling knowledge here and there, trying to get him to go into more detail. So I hope you guys enjoy this show. Thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, if you would, please share it. Please like us and follow us. All that good stuff. The Mythicist Podcast. I'm True Seeker. And uh, here we go. If you would like to sponsor the show or advertise on the Mythicist Podcast, you can do so by going to www.mythicist.me and click on Sponsor the Show for more info. If you would like to support the show financially, you can do that also by going to mythicist.me and become a monthly supporter. We appreciate your monthly support. You are now listening to the Mythesis Podcast, your portal to the paranormal, streaming live at mythesis.me, your hub for all things spiritual, esoteric, and paranormal. And now, your host, Truth Seeker. Busy the kid. What's going on, brother? Hey, Truth Seeker. How you doing, man? Glad to finally link up with you. Finally, man. I've been trying to make this happen for a long time, brother. Hey, man, you know, I, I, I wanted to make sure that we, we made this happen. It's, it's really, really important. And I've seen your Instagram, and I, I love your outlook on life and all things to all men and things of that nature and the human race and all of that cool stuff that you're on and also the spirituality. Just to even mention it is just a feather in your cap to me, man. So let's get started. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Well, that's what this phone call is going to be about. Um, I've been seeing some videos, I've been watching some of your interviews and seeing you going off on some live performances, dropping some knowledge, man, and kind of wanted to pick your brain a little bit about some of these topics and spirituality and how some of these things relate to your life, man. And, uh, um, hey, well, grab your shovel, man. Grab your I'm shovel, ready, man. Dude. It's a whole lot of not, it's a whole lot of nonsense in my mind. So come on, <laughs> get some of this stuff out. I'm get ready, out. man. So spirituality, man, how does that play a part in your life? What is your spiritual practice, man? I mean, well, man, spirituality, man, I look at it as far as invisibility, faith, imagination, and last, what you want. And there's all aspects of want. You understand? Because we're a lot of kind of people in the human race. Like, we're not all nice and humble, but we're not all killers either. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And there's also the mid wedge and those things that, you know, I look at the, you know, spirituality, you know, like like people's dreams, people's imaginations and stuff like that, and then the person that they are and what they wanna see, you know, in a you know, in a spiritual kind of aspect. So I just look at it like that, you know what I mean? In all yeah. kind of ways, you know. So I was able to put stuff together. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, just be alive with good and even what people might consider bad, you know? Yeah. So basically, in a sense, you're talking about your imagination. So you believe people create their own reality with their thoughts and their dreams and ideas, and they can make that manifest into this reality? I mean, I think that anything is possible with that because it's a lot of lonely things that have power as well. So you know, that are different and are lonely because they're different. So even if it's your wildest imagination, it might be exactly what somebody is like or what somebody needs, you know, or whatever it might be, you know. So that's kind of like how I look at spirituality as a word. But like what I follow, um, I'm a firm believer in Jesus. I'm a firm believer in the bridegroom theory. I'm a firm believer in the connection of human and God in the highest capacity that God is willing to let that human go and the human is willing to let God go, that union, that bond. 
And that's my thing right there, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's my belief as far as that goes outside of myself. But, like, for myself, like, you know, you know, you know, you can't be selfish, you know. You got to go, you know, and, you know, look out for other people and stuff like that first and foremost because it might guide you at the end of the day to something that is meant to be for you and you have a lot less free will of choosing and that takes a lot of ego out and so on and so forth. So that way it's just like, Hey, this is meant to be, and this is where you wind up and stuff. This is what you made yourself to be. So that's kind of my religion as far as once we get past a lot of the things that are already documented and that are already put in place, then, you know, later on, you know, you might have something for yourself later, 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 later in life. You know what I mean? Because I have a good life. You know, mm-hmm. made it in music, um, awards and, and records and all kind of cool stuff, you know. So I can't really ask for anything until I'm able to accept what's already put into place, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally, man. Um, I want to go a little bit deeper, man, right off the back. You know, we're just getting started. I want to talk to you a little bit about angelology. Oh, angelology. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Go ahead. Okay, I want to ask you, who is the angel Nuriel? Who is who? The angel Nuriel. I don't know, man. My whole angel philosophy and how I look at the angelical kingdom yeah. is it has its own order, mm-hmm. and my life is patterned different than the order that's already set in, if okay. that makes sense. I think that each angel is an individual in an order within themselves. Yeah. They're, 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 they have their, you know, their Ten Commandments. They're, they're just one angel, just one angel by themselves is a Ten Commandments and all of those different things that suffice you know, not being human and having a brain and thinking. It's more of streaming. And you know you had in, you know, the, the Pison River in Eden, and you had this stream and that stream and that stream and that stream and so on and so forth. And then, you know, once you start going off into, you know, um, trying to figure it out, immediately good and bad pops up. Yeah. And then judgment. So I kind of lean back and just, you know, give everything that I possibly would want for myself if I was in that place, if that makes sense. Yeah. The uh, way I came well, up I don't with that. Know, I don't know in specific. I don't know specific that angel. Exactly. Though. Okay. Please continue. Yeah, the way I got that name was I did some research after watching an interview with you about a specific angel that stands 300 parasangs tall. Now, I looked up those terms that you used in an interview and um, and it came up to be an angel by the name of Nuriel, which represents the fire of the Lord, uh, about these illuminary angelic beings. And I wanted to just uh, kind of touch on that a little bit to see, you know what I'm saying, just to kind of pick your brain, yeah. man. I mean, well, I mean, basically, I think that covers thought versus stream. And I think the only way to explain thinking versus streaming angels is to say fire, Mm -hmm. you know, um, electricity, a.k.a. So I think that even if that wasn't what was meant to be said or what it was meant to be, when it fits perfectly and you get one of those, I feel good now, I'm okay, I like that, then, you know, within that, I think that's growth. And I think that's stuff that human beings do every single day. You know, every single day of their life is help angels and vice versa. Because if an angel is with you, then you are sinless at that point, no matter what you do, because it's them. Whether it's a bite of food, whether it's a breath of fresh air, it's like, hey, you know, we were in the room with a billion different life forms. We don't tune in to them. This angel is here to take that away from us. If you think that deeply, about right and wrong, and so on and so forth. So I look at it in that kind of an intricate kind of a way, but you have to be a deep, deep, deep individual to understand that, you know? Yeah, we definitely have a lot of deep uh, people who are into deep thought that 
tune into the podcast and, you know, uh, ask the bigger questions in life. And a lot of people are into a lot of different things when we're talking about this angelic order and these things like that. And we talk about um, electricity, man. When, whenever you said that, there was an interview where you were talking about seeing an apparition come down from the lightning that it was you and I believe it was flesh seeing this apparition come down from heaven, man. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Well, I don't think it was so much heaven. I just think that, you know, when I see certain things, I'm going to immediately amp it up. I'm going to immediately, I'm going to make a, you know, a normal thing that I can explain scientifically more because it's an angel name on it and so on and so forth, because I want to make sure that the road is set just in case, you know, there's ever a problem with the flight pattern, with the order, or if the order doesn't exist any longer, because a lot of orders die because of certain things, faith, and things of that nature. Like Moses, he lived, you know, for a long time. And, you know, but the beloved didn't, you know, and when Moses came, things changed. When, when beloved was here, things changed. And since then, things have been at that standstill in my mind. It's just been at a standstill from that point on. You know, I think that it was more of who is going to stop this murder that's about to take place. You understand? Mm -hmm. If they're there, if they're taking care of, you know, human beings and uh, um, interacting with them in a coherence of where the human knows, I got an angel with me, brother. Flat out, brother. And it's just known intellectually, insight-wise, when you talk to yourself, that valve in your brain when you pray, that canal, when you breathe, that canal, and so on and so forth. So I think that there has been a certain amount of, let's say, weightlifting to fortify, to strengthen, and so on and so forth. So I think that at that point, it just starts to get confusing. And us as people, we seek out and wonder why. And the truth may hurt us. Mm -hmm. To the point to where we stop looking. Yeah. When it's when it's flat out and it's bold and it's blatant, and you're like, "This is why." And then people will tend to say, "Well, that is wrong. Why would I look for something like that?" Mm -hmm. So some things are best untouched. Yeah. So that way, the people that normally seek angelical order or angels or just that entire vibe aren't tainted by a truth that they weren't there to experience, nor was the internet there. And what people got to understand is once computers came into play, all humans became geniuses. All humans immediately knew every fucking thing. <laughs> Everything. Once you look at that computer, it's every answer you could possibly imagine. So that basically the realm of truth just saturated the minds of the human race since the computer chip and since the computer, who people say, and lots of people say, is an artificial brain, yeah, and so on and so forth, and that's another level, of course, and we'll tap into that later. So that's why I think that we're at at this point, and some people don't notice it and don't want to notice it because if they start to notice it, then they're going to be hurt yeah. about what they see and what they hear and so on and so forth. Has that come to play for you with studying? And uh, I mean, me, man, I'm more, I'm a gift giver. I decided the best way to get away from all of the pain of the truth and all of the pain of why you should do something and why you shouldn't do something, the best way is to gift as many things as you can within that. So it never is an issue. It's like, hey, I don't care about this any longer. I have what I want. Yeah. You know, somebody actually gave a damn about what I wanted in life. And I mean, angelical-wise. 
mm-hmm. because nobody just basically said, hey, Archangel Michael, is there anything that you like on us? I mean, I know you're saving all these people and everything. And, you know, I, I see you running over there, Mother Teresa, and I, I see you there at the deathbed of lots of humans who are making the transition to, to heaven, and I see it. Is there anything that you wanted or anything? Because I don't know if anyone even asked you. I mean, did you want anything? So that's my style. Okay. And that's what I do to cover up the bullshit and, and, and the things that can sway you from even asking that question. Because, you know, it can numb you, man. Well, and what, it can I mean, black in your whole fucking heart, man. That they well, would I want. mean, and that's the, and, that, and, and that's the, and, and I don't know. You know, you never know. I know it's you different for everybody. I know it's different for everybody. Right. And like we have, you know what I'm right. saying? We, I think we have a lot of people who have came before us who have made certain packs. We, we understand people like uh, Tesla was involved with angelic contact as well. And we see the knowledge and the information that was imparted to him, right? To the earth. So basically like this, just like you just said, Go ahead. is that shit right there. Mm-hmm. Tesla. Dude, that's the name of a fucking car. So whatever pact was made from this point forward with whomever that was, every time a goddamn Tesla passes, then the knowledge therefore should be abundant. And that's how you do it. And that's exactly what you just said. Exactly what you just said. You modernize it. And you make it for this day and for this time, 2016, right now, mm-hmm. up until, you know, there is a new renaissance of, knowledge yeah. or or technology and that right there there it goes yeah. you got it go ahead continue yeah so in, so so basically instead of taking the occult knowledge the really esoteric stuff and just putting it out there plain you take it and formulate it in a way where the people can understand it i mean it, it has to be plain and simple yeah you know when you start throwing up um uh if it's true or if it's not that's going to be in the eyes of, of the beholder. Exactly. That's when you'll find out when you say, this is what I think about it. I'm stepping back. Whether something happens with it or not, that's totally on who the promise was made to. Yeah. That's totally on who the order was told to. And that would be mm, a language or a way of life or a flight pattern or welcome back to earth or some cool shit like that. You know, and just, it just happens per being of a spiritual order, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely. When I go out and make a connection, when I'm stargazing, when I'm gazing into the heavens, man, like the connection I get is just different things. It's like, okay, if you want to keep this connection up, if you want to stay on that path, these, this is what I require of you. And for me, I can say it's been a blessing because it's been something that helps me. It's like, look, true seeker, you need to deal with your diet. Quit eating all the meat. Start eating more vegetation. Start taking care of your temple. Do this. Spend time in meditation. And then we can go to the next level, right? So I kind of see that as far as like you're saying, what do you want? Talking to the angels. What do you want for me to do so that we can communicate, right? Okay, we're with stain from me, take care of your body. And so I think I think that's what you're talking about as far as like asking them what they want. And so it, it I think it's something that's gonna be a blessing though. I don't think it's gonna be like, you know, take a life, you know, this is what I want you to do. I want you to kill someone. I want you to do this. I want you to do something negative. What's your opinion on that? People, you know, claim they hear voices and the demons wanted them to, to do something. Are there well, these negative forces honest, as well? I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you. Nobody sat with flesh and bone for 10 years in jail. So that's the answer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's the answer. Nobody sat with him in jail for 10 years. Whatever was on him or whatever I seen or whatever may have happened when he went to jail, wasn't there no more. So it didn't mean that. So I have like first, first point examples of that, but that's his life. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's his thing. You know, that's something that he's on, yeah. you know, so that's, that's my idea. As far as me, I'm, I'm, I'm so secure within myself and I'm so secure with the things that I have accomplished, whether it be worldly or otherworldly, that it's just more of, Hey, BB set, man. Yeah. My BB is really, 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 really set to, to just be okay 
for eternity because whether kicked, punched, stabbed, shot, hurt, talked about, ridiculed, stripped, raped, a nigga still not blaming nobody, even if they want to blame, and so on and so forth. So it's being very, very of a clear conscience, Mm -hmm. no matter what may happen to you at that point. So there is a blame game that goes on, and that blame game covers us. So when some shit really happens, you can always dip into, but wasn't nobody with Jeffrey Dahmer, though. So it couldn't have been nobody with you and me. And and that's how you swerve that shit. That's how you get away from it. You dig? Whether it's happening or not. You feel me? Because, you know, besides, besides the fact of it's painful to have to be around somebody that's done you wrong, it's even more painful to have to be around somebody that's done you wrong that will never get disciplined for it, mm-hmm. like ever. Yeah. And that's one thing that I think people need to understand about angels. They will never be hit, ever. They will never be touched, ever. And that's my study. No yeah. matter what they do, no matter where they go, ain't nobody going to put their goddamn hands on no angel. They'll fly the fuck out that body, and that human that they occupy going to take that ass beat. Yeah. So that alone is enough for me to say my my human race did good. God damn it, we did good. We did good, baby. It's almost like you you better respect the authority, you know. I mean, it's a better respect that is already set in place without the words even having to come out so we get no more anger involved. You know, because that just agitates the situation even more. Just, you know, it just agitates it. You know what I mean? And it and it, and it takes it to a level of, well, why? You know, it's like, well, there are in all of that shit, you dig? So it's just an unspoken order, an unspoken word that's just known. There are plenty of examples, but why use them? It just strums up messed up feelings. And things, and then, oh, well, that's why that angel's order didn't get completed. And that's why, and so on, and all that malarkey, and so on and so forth. (laughs) You know what I mean? It gets to the point to where if you discuss the problem, then they don't, they don't like leave. But if you look towards a brighter, a brighter future, and if you really understand that humans eventually become angels in human heaven, Mm -hmm. like exactly what the angels, you know, what we said the angels look like in books, we was basically drawing what we're going to look like in heaven because we don't see anything with wings out here. We just don't. Like, just we just don't. And that's what we're used to. And that's what we drew. And that's what we saw. Yeah. And so on and so forth. So it wound up being for us. So when you get that part, and then you see that part of how things coincide and how things grow, then, you know, you start to realize the benefits of let's not focus on the negative right now. Let's, let's talk about the good stuff. Yeah. And then you're good from there, you know? Mm-hmm. No doubt. I think that's why the scripture says that if there's anything true, if there's anything noble, if there's anything pure, think on these things. Let's speak about these things. Let's don't focus on the negativity because you begin to give birth to that stuff. You begin to uh, give birth to anxiety and fear and doubt and hatred and things like that. So yeah, that's, that's powerful, man. We're we're like really tapping into spirituality on those basic principles of just thinking of just your thought patterns, man. No doubt. Totally. Whenever we're talking about this angelic order, which we've referred to as the luminaries you mentioned they fly around the earth uh faster than seven times in one second have you physically seen any of these type of entities man i know you said you've seen that one with i don't flesh. think i don't think i've seen it i don't mm-hmm. think i've seen it to the point of to where i can present it to someone else yeah but it was more of something that's happening right now and it's not just worldly exactly. because what i've experienced more is you know if they're flying 
at that fast of rate, then how are they going to sustain a temple mm -hmm. that fast? It's like they would have to go from, it's like a, it's like a, a long ass line of people, right? Mm -hmm. And they fly that fast, right? So by the time they're at the first person, they're already at the last person that fast. So there is no focus. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to drudge up the things that do have focus okay. and the things that do have wherewith to, yeah. you know, bring forth any, I want, I want, I want, because everything is intricately beautiful in its own yeah. way and a part of its own yeah. order within itself. Yeah. You know? So what would you say to somebody, man, who is just like stuck on tapping into that and seeing something manifest from the heavenlies, right? Or just from the other side in general. Like I was at a point where I wanted to see something so bad that I was contacting negative entities, right? And I wasn't going to be happy until I seen something. So I'm getting that you somewhat have an agenda. Like you're just kind of saying, look, don't focus on that stuff. Focus on what is here, what we can influence, what we can uh, see, touch, taste, If I was you, to hear. be honest with you, I would go directly to the place that we're walking on. I'd go directly to NASA. I'd go directly on the spiritual body that we can see, the big blue ball, Earth. Yeah. It's massive. And it's nothing but life on it. Nothing but life. And it's there. It exists, and we're here, and it sustains us. It fortifies us. It loves us. It gives us a place to live. It functions in a way so we can breathe, and so we can and, and, and love, and so on and so forth. And it's a circle, and it's blue, and it's huge, and it's ours, and we're here. So there is no further that we have to look. Now, within that might yeah. be something cool because <laughs> we're here. We're kind of cool, too. And so on and so forth. So I would go more cosmos with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I would go more planets with it. I would go more Zeus, Jupiter, Venus, and the studies of that level yeah. in order to solidify you know, exactly what it is that we're looking for, you know, as far as that goes. Because within that right there, Zeus and Venus, within that, Venus is a planet, dude. Like, seriously. And it's not considered an angel, but it's definitely considered a spiritual body being and so on. Yeah. So that, that to me, is the answer to the, the, the seeking mm -hmm. and to the looking and yeah, so definitely. on and so forth. It's all right there, dude. It's all right there. Definitely. Yeah, it is something, you know what? And that's something that f for me, like it kind of brought more substance to my belief system and my spirituality was the fact that I could go out and stargaze. I could go out there and make my connection with the creator. Right. And ask to see something, to ask for one of the angels to slow down enough for me to see it, right? And then come to find out these were these entities traveling back and forth from these different planets to Earth, right? They were traveling back and forth. It just as the scriptures say, it talks about they travel back and forth, these different principalities and powers. And it's and, and so I think it, for me, it made more sense that it was something that was literally out there. Like in the cosmos, not something that was in another realm that may be real, that may not be real, but something that is out there in space traveling back and forth. So, yeah, um, there is a lot to it. There is a, an order to these I things, mean, well, man. You can't, you can't forget about aliens. Exactly. And that a lot of people, because the aliens aren't making direct contact with us, they got a lot more answers than we can imagine. They've watched Earth regenerate time after time after time after time again. You know, when this entire camp, this entire theology, and this entire literature dies, Earth continues to live. And I think that the 
answer might be because it hasn't presented itself as a full being to be complained to at that point. But what happens during the galaxy bump? You know? So by Earth not being a being, you get a lot of complaints to like your average Joe Schmo. You know, you get a lot of people looking around and different things of that nature because they give up on where they are. And then they think that they're more outside of it. They think that they're more what they're looking for instead of what they are. Like you can look for something, find it, and not be it because you were looking for it anyway. So it ain't within you because you had to go look for it. You know, so I think that that's where the confusion steps in. You add in a little power, you add in a little, you know, um, anger, and so on and so forth. And, you know, you might think you're immortal because you're, you have the opportunity to speak to something outside of it that may just come here for a minute for something totally outside of, of what was looking for. Yeah. Totally outside of it. Totally outside of it. Had nothing to do with it at all. So those are the, the balances that you have to just deal with. Like you said, your name's Truth Seeker, you know? And the truth is right there in our face. You know, if anything that you're dealing with doesn't understand where it was during the last galaxy bump and what they were doing then, if they really don't know, then that means they're here on Earth up until the galaxy bump. And then it's a cleansing, a ushering out, and then a new camp comes in. I think a lot of people as well, like you're saying, when they see something like that or they make contact or whatever, you do have those people who get on the kick that I am the messenger. I am the the one that is put here to save the people or I'm the only one who can do this type deal, man. We see a lot of those people pop up, you know, who have had encounters or claim to be contactees or something like that. To me, it's, yeah, it's all about who's listening because it's like you got bums on the corner that talk to themselves all day, every day. Mm -hmm. And a motherfucker just look at them and say, he's bum. He ain't got no money. You feel me? He can say what the fuck he wants. And then you got motherfuckers who are rich as fuck whose life is, is flourished and say the same thing. And then that's when they say, you know, about them. Oh, he thinks he's a goddamn messenger. Look at his goddamn jewelry. <laughs> goddamn, he's got a fucking Rolex on. How the fuck can he be a fucking messenger? And it's like, well, goddamn, the bum just said the same shit. <laughs> the same exact shit. Yeah. The same exact shit. And actually went a little further <laughs> yeah. and said he was one of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so... I think that once you balance that out, you start to realize where those questions are coming from. And it just becomes, you know, like, wow, you know, like, damn, just bold, blatant truth. If they're going to say that shit about the guy with the Rolex on and not the bum in the street who's way worse, who's day in and day out is not washing his ass. He only begs for motherfucking money. Um, he will not work. At all, because he is entitled to get money from whoever, and whoever don't give him money ain't blessed. Mm -hmm. That's crazy as fuck. That's some crazy ass, wrong ass shit. It's like, bro, we're all out here working because that's this society, and you're saying that we're evil because we don't give you a goddamn dollar, and all day and all night we're all evil as fuck, and the only nigga to give you a dollar is the good guy. And yeah. You know, so it's a thought process out there that's just like that, but it's never addressed, you know, and that's when you start getting into, you know, what the real reason is, you know, behind all of that, if yeah. that makes freaking sense, you know? Yeah, there's a lot more to it, and there's a lot of stuff taking place in the hearts and minds of individuals across the globe, man, and people have seen some things that they you know, I guess haven't been able to come back from. I know that's right. I've seen some treacherous shit happen, man. I've watched my mom, oh my goodness, get damn near every bone in her body broke, man. You know, just over looking for fucking love, dude. Yeah. You know, totally, totally not 
spiritual, totally nothing there, just, man, I've seen that shit happen. Up until I got a little older and I was able to start carrying guns and so on and so forth, and then I was able to protect my mom. But I couldn't protect my mom when I was a little baby. You know what I mean? But I made it when I was like, I say 14, 15 years old, I met Easy e around 15, 16 years old. Yeah. I'd left out to, to Los Angeles at about 15. So when I finally was, and even before then, you know, I was I was there at that door. Like, if you touch my mom, I'm going to shoot you in your fucking head with your own gun. Yeah. You know, so I've seen it in so many levels and I've reacted on it, not angelically, but something pulled me back from it. The toughest dude in the world did nothing but kick my ass. You know, I go back when I'm 14 years old. And I'm like, you're going to do what you want to do anyway. Bring it. Yeah. I knew where the gun was. I planned everything out. I even planned on going to jail. And for the first motherfucking time, that motherfucker creased like he had an angel with him. And I had shot like a few people already, you know, when I, you know, and so on and so forth. Because I'm open and I'm candid. I'm a street nigga. Like, but I was a baby, though, at that time. 13, 14 yeah. years old. Ooh, look, and so on and so forth. So I was ready. I had fully went into boot camp, fully went into training like a military man. And at that point, you know, it was more of maybe it was good that I, that, that guy creased at that time. Yeah. Maybe that was a good point in my life. Because maybe I would have not been able to go out to, to California to meet Easy E or any of these different things. Yeah. So, I mean, that's where my mind state is, and that's why I was at with it. So there is a difference in blaming, accepting some help, and so on and so forth. It's just when when your courage is questioned and things of that nature as a human being. And it's questioned on a spiritual level. And, and being tough becomes the basis. And what you're used to is being held back from murder, rightful murder. I was right. In, in that situation, I was fucking right. Mm -hmm. And then to be totally twisted around on some tough shit, then you might have a question or two. It's like, well, why, why that? And then now that. I'm used to humble. I'm used to the toughest ombre pulling me back. You know? So it goes into those different things. So you just got to stay away from blame. You got to stay away from, you know, drudging up different things and just try to get past that shit. You know, get past the whole, oh, it's unfair. Oh, and all that other bullshit. You just got to get past it, let that shit go, and learn how to progress in life. Understand what the galaxy bump is. Understand where they are with it. Understand the goodness in whoever. Make sure you give a good shout out to the ones that hold you back from some treacherous shit and move on. Yeah. And that's all you can really freaking do, man. You know, that's the only way that you can assist and aid spiritual beings is to protect them from the galaxy bump. Because once this earth regenerates, it's all over, bruh. It's all over. Yeah. All the names, all the books. I know you've watched movies to where you've seen this and seen what happens when the earth regenerates. Ain't no more literature. Ain't no more computer chips. Ain't no more uh, knowledge. Ain't no deeds. Ain't no tasks. Ain't no churches. And then it takes, what, billions and billions? And, I mean, the Earth is, what, 4.54 billion years old right now. It's not 2016, bro. Exactly. It's 4.54 billion years and counting. Flat out. And that's scientifically stated. Could be off of a million or two. Add as much extra time you need to add on to it. That's really what the fuck is going on. And people need to realize that first. Get out of this. It's 2016, all right? God damn it, it's time for a spiritual renaissance. No, boo-boo. It's 4.54 billion this year. And the spiritual renaissance been here for a while. 
there's some fucking things that could be accomplished, and then there's some things that just can't be accomplished because after 4.54 billion years, if there's still a minute problem, then you got to address it as such. Why the fuck is this small issue a goddamn problem? And then you start going off into this and going off into that and trying to figure things out, and that's when you become a beautiful person to them. You, you know, I mean, it's just when you become a beautiful person, it's like, damn, you know, this guy understands things and he's actually fucking trying to help for one. It's been a while, you know, since somebody wanted to help all of us, you know? So for those that are on a spiritual quest, they've got to understand the rules. First of all, turf. That's turf. Earth. 4.54 billion a year. Turf. That's the first rule. Next, galaxy bump. The regeneration of the earth. Any spiritual being know what it was like to go through that. And from that point on, from the highest to the lowest, you might hear silence. You might hear <laughs> and so on. You might hear damn. And then all of those things you round up in a circle as emotions, as I, we, we, we've been learning a lot, like, you know, and so on. And that's when all the beauty and the adorable shit of spirituality starts to manifest within you, yeah. if you can fathom that. But sometimes you don't want to wake up a sleeping giant. Like you said, sometimes you might contact the wrong thing. It's like, whoa, I know this shit. Yeah. Wait a minute, don't tell me some shit that I ain't know that I can't fucking fix. Now hold the fuck up. Yeah. And so on and so forth. So when your mind goes that deep, man, dare yourself to take it a little further. And that's just for yourself. Because it always goes a little bit I'm further, for... man. I think a lot of people think they have it figured out. And it's like, you know what? I don't even grasp but a glimpse of what's going on, of what's really happening with all this stuff, you know? I mean, yeah, man, but to try yeah. means a whole hell of a lot more than to say, ah, ha, 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 we got heaven, ah, ha, we built our heaven, we got stuck here, ah, ha, ha, when the earth regen, all that shit, that shit is, you know, not cool. It's just not cool. Yeah. You know, it's just not cool. Because you're dealing with the fear of something that's never been afraid before. So when you know things of that nature, then you're supposed to take it and go further. You know? Take it and go a little further. Hey, I, I, I'd take you to heaven if I could, if you'd be my personal angel forever. And so on and so forth. i got plenty of room. I know you've been learning how to do things without the brain. And I know you've been existing you know, without that and with streams, maybe we can help each other so I can go find my mom. Because maybe my whole intellectual outlook will be wiped out. And, you know, when, when you become sinless and you don't remember the good or the bad, you might, you know? So there are ways to just take it a little further, if you can. Yeah. It seems like, man, all the interesting people, everyone who is like have a calling on their life, right? It seems like they've all been through a lot of crazy stuff, right? And I know that I'm familiar with your story. And j just for those who aren't, man, I mean, there's a lot of people who don't know that you were a product of child abuse and that you were actually on um, America's Most Wanted, man. Can you touch on that a little bit? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Well, I mean, everybody got a cool-ass story, you know? If you talk to anybody in this world, everybody been through a little something. My little something-something was what my mom went through. Um, happened to be found by John Walsh. And, you know, eventually being brought home and, you know, um, foster homes after that. Um, so you were kidnapped, abusive correct? Abusive motherfuckers. And, yeah, abusive motherfuckers after that. It was yeah. more of, hey, I'm not going to understand your trials. So it's like even after that, you know, no understanding on, hey, this guy's been through some tragic stuff. Maybe I need to get this kid a hug. Maybe I need to show him, you know, what a man 
you know, how a man would raise his son. You know, these are the kind of different things that I wasn't able to learn. So I had to learn to be my own father. And then when I met my homeboys, everybody played daddy at certain times. I was dad when the heat came on. We we're about to get killed and we're in a situation on the street. I was dad. I'm the guy you give the gun to. I'm going to go crazy over my nigga. Um, when, it was, when it comes to making it, Lele was dad. When it was, you know, or, or when it comes to feeding her, flesh and bone was pop. Or when it comes to coming up with um, a new style for music, crazy bone was pop. Or when it comes to giving us a home and, 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 and giving us somewhere to sleep, excuse me, stuff, or giving us somewhere to sleep, then that was big CC, babe. That was, that was wishbone right there. That was pop it in. So we all played that and. That was kind of like how my life was patterned after that. But yeah, man, that's the tragic story, man. I was kidnapped and I was found by John Walsh and I'm here now, man. And I met my buds and man, and everything's been going good from there. It's been ups and downs, but the ups is what I want people in the world to know yeah. so they don't focus on anything other than this good stuff you and me are trying to put out there to society, man. Yeah. Well, that's the thing with people who go through a lot of negativity. Like you can't be, you can't appreciate the sunlight without being in the midst of darkness. You can't appreciate the good times without going through the bad times, you know? And uh, I think dude, that's what I had, I had somebody just say that, dude, you are super correct. Didn't mean to cut you off. Keep going. Yeah. No, I'm just going to say, that's why the scriptures say that he who is forgiven of much loves much. Their level of devotion is just out of this world. How thankful they are to see another day, to take another breath. When they know that, man, I should be dead, right? I shouldn't even be here right now, but I'm, but I made it. I get to live another day. I get to tell my story. I get to be a light to someone else who's going through that same darkness that I went through. That's why it's so important to tell your story, man, to put those truths out here on the Internet to people face-to-face -face, wherever, man, just it just to encourage people who are going through some dark times, man, because everybody's out there who have, has questions and stuff. So, yeah, man, I appreciate what you're doing. I mean, look, man, it's a mentality. It's a way of life. So I'm, I'm always, you know, there to be free to conversations and to open up about myself and, and to speak on myself. I'm always open for that. I don't pull punches. Because I walk this earth, and I'm me. And, and other people have blessed me, man. Someone just wrote to me on Instagram and said, D, and it was a young, it was actually, it was a young lady. And she had to be quoting the same scripture because she was saying to me, she said, I, I'm doing well in my life now, but I miss the ramen noodles. Mm. I miss the tough times yeah. because I didn't have as many responsibilities. Yep as I have now, and it was less stressful yeah. than what it is. And that goes off into why people are in the streets and not working and so on and so forth as well. So there's a way, you know, to take those blessings, to put it over to there, squash all of the mess, keep it right here with human intellect, and earn that human heaven that we already built. We built it ourselves. We really did. We really, 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 really did go to human heaven. And we understand it because we get hints. I was there for a minute. I just got back. Shit, my heart stopped. My brain stopped. I was there, bro. It looked nice, man. I seen my mom. I seen this one. I seen that one. It was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And so on and so forth. So that's our proof that we built that. We built that stuff right there, baby. And... You know, from that point on, it's just all about helping those that are caught in the galaxy bump. Mm -hmm. So where it is heaven on earth for angels. Earth is heaven. Yeah. Period. So for I want, yeah, I want to talk about the angelic communication a little bit more with just some stuff I've heard you say in several interviews and then having this type of phenomenon happen myself, 
I know God speaks through everything. He speaks through creation. He speaks through people, right? He speaks through everything in our lives, our situations, circumstances, synchronicities, things that line up. You mentioned God speaking through the television, man, and just using everything around you. Uh, so, what, I mean, what's the deal with that? Have you just been, uh, had the TV on and just what is being said on, on the television just before you for that moment? Have you had any of those those deja vu well, moments as well? Search, my entire search had everything to do with those that had come to America and before they went and did some fucked up shit, watching and hearing about everything that they watched before they went out and did some fucked up shit. Yeah. So I was thinking, how about I search out the TV, see what's on. And from that point on, you start to realize the powerful things that be. Just like you said, the seven at seven times and yeah. so on and so forth. You, you know, you really can't calculate it, but it's, it's very simple. What makes you feel good and what makes you want to get your ass up and go love somebody and go take care of somebody, that's the good part. What frustrates you, what judges you, as if you're sitting in church and the pastor talking directly about you, that's the stuff that hurts you inside. That's the opposite reason to even have a television. It's supposed to be for comfort. It's supposed to, to, be, to, to, to be a part of society. Hey, what's going on today in the world? Hey, what's the new products going on? What are these guys pushing over here? Hey, what's going on on reality television? Hey, look at that family right there. That's nice. Even though they're acting, still pretty freaking cool. That's what it's for, to feel good, you know? And that's what I found out at this point in 2016. You know, because sometimes if you find something through television, then it might step its game up because it's kind of done with it. You know, after a moment, there's only so many times that you can betray or negative a blessing during the flight pattern. When it starts to get flipped and negative, you know what? Keep it. You feel me? Like, yeah. it's just more like, you know, I was having a ball. We were talking. We were having a great fucking time. And all of a fucking sudden, here comes some bullshit. You know what? I don't need this shit. I'd rather talk to a fucking bird. Flat out. Yeah. And, you know, it's all about template. Yeah. It's all about toler tolerating and agitation. And when you're dealing with something that can talk to a mosquito, it's about as irritating as you can fucking get. So the study isn't shallow. It's just more of, you know what, I'm good. Take television if you want. Because I'm not going to sit back and be negative with somebody that I have built a great relationship with. Keep it. And then it starts to go haywire because the control is gone. Yeah. And then it's, you know, and so on. And then the rest of the variables are always, you know, they're just, hey, it could be this, could be that, could be this, could be that, could be this. That's because it's gone. When you said that I was able to speak to the Lord or what I call the Lord or the highest of the high uh -huh. or dimension through the television. Yeah. The reason why I can't elaborate on it anymore is because of that. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a great thing going, man. Like, we really, really did, man. We were accomplishing a lot of stuff. You know, just making leeway and, and just knowledge and, and, and peace and fixing things and so on and so forth. And then all of the freaking sudden, an abundant amount of negativity comes in. And after one, two, three, four, maybe five times, it was more or less, I knew it was gone from that way of speaking. Yeah. I knew from that point on. It's, it's just obvious. Okay. So that's with the television. Let me ask you this, though. There's still a lot of spirituality, a lot of hidden truths and things like that within the movies. Have you had any of the in encounters by watching some of these movies that are out there with this ancient knowledge embedded within them that are like waking up stuff oh, within yeah. you? Oh, 
Oh, brother, it's so much stuff out there, dude. It's, it's, one thing about Earth, man, we're nine trillion deep, and that's just documented. And within that, we have the internet. So there is no end to the knowledge all the way up until the galaxy bump and the regeneration of Earth. We already have human heaven built. So we're good after that. So it's more of 30th to the 5th, light, rent, gas, uh, food, um, love, care, hugs, kids, progress of life, and making things a lot simpler for things that are just here. You said a mouthful, so with movies, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, so with movies, abundant, dude. It's just endless. You hear me? Yeah. Endless. It's beautiful, dude. It's beautiful. I, I can't go. I can't go far, far enough to tell you how much good stuff is within that, man. How much good stuff? I, I mean, I could name you a few artists that live the whole TV life. That deity out the TV. All their actions, all of their movement, all about television. The things that they see on television. The metaphors. Of, of of the Fresh Prince uh, and, and different things of that nature. I mean, it, it's a whole literature like that. And it, I, when I sat back and I, I looked at it and I was like, wow, this is freaking cool. Like, this is freaking cool. And some people are just cool with that. They're just cool with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're just cool with it. You know? What it, okay. You you said, um, and I'm just quoting from an interview, you talked about your purple homie who keeps a turban on. What was you referring to? Uh, I believe it could have been something in passing. Could have been an, an outfit. Um, it could have been a statement. You know, um, it's like, do you remember how angels had in specific titles? Yeah. This is the, and this is his function, and that could just be the opening of a conversation. Yeah. In order to open up some sort of a a stream of, hey, how you doing, man? You can relate to me right here, and then we can build from there. Fuck it. This is me, you know? And, And so on and so forth. So whether you have a purple turban or whether you have angel of love, or any of those different things. I think that that was where that was, mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. So that's just kind of how it works, man, yeah. you know? Okay. Um, let me ask you this, too. Uh, within that same interview, I noticed you kind of apologized. You basically said, my bad, after you were dropping knowledge. It's just something that you try not to put out there just for the lay people? It's just something of your own experience that you like to keep for yourself and you don't go around flaunting it like we were talking about you just try to make it where man, it's, people can it understand just constantly it just constantly grows man it's like when you see things appear and when you see problems arise you know you want to be the kind of person that figures things out up until it's like you know we're fucking tired of you you know trying to be mr know-it-all yeah. and trying to act like you know everything and then when the most major problem pops up, it's like, well, you guys have said that to me enough, and you guys are, like, hating me for trying to help by dealing with the most major issues that have to be dealt with before I get out of here, you know? And I pass it on to anybody that, that, that can, you know, and bless them, you know, for trying. Yeah. So... And, and and that's where I'm at now. This is what I used to do. This is how I used to feel, you know, and to say, man, damn, sorry, I didn't mean to drop everything on you, you know, <laughs> all at once. It's kind of like where that may have been. Like, you know, I, I don't want to drop so much on someone and give them something that they can't solve, you know, mm-hmm. and leave them with this pain in their gut that they can't fucking dissolve. <laughs> So that's why I always want to make sure that every human being that I talk to, don't forget mom, don't forget dad, 
Don't forget the billions of uh, of, of life forms that you got passed in mom's womb alone. That's every single human on earth. Nobody can say, well, I didn't. And, no, no, you did. <laughs> you too. <laughs> and you. And you. And you. <laughs> so those are the kind of things that I like to leave with after I say, hey, sorry for dropping so much stuff on you, kiddo. Um, this is how you get out of it, you know, <laughs> yeah. as a human being. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> Just try to give yourself to the experience, man, without, you know, a lot of us try to, you know, find ways to pull ourselves out of this experience. And that's why, you know, we have drugs and alcohol, things like that, man, where like people are like, look, I'm done with this experience. I can't handle it. I'm I'm not I'm not built for this. You know what I'm saying? With all these pressures and things that are going on, people are trying to separate themselves from themselves. Right. You know? I know. And so it's just hard I know. enough I know just trying exactly to cope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know exactly what you mean, and there. This is the thing, man. This is the thing. You're trying, dude. Yeah. You're fucking trying, man. Not everybody's doing that, man. Nobody's focused on that. Nobody's trying anymore. Once they find out that they're going to be okay, the first time they get, you know, hurt, the first time they don't hit the lottery, the first time that they get punched in the face and they're not helped, and different things of that nature by who they're trying to help on a massive level, they're going to give up. They're going to be like, you're, you're not loyal to me. You know, you're not, you're not taking care of me. And, and, and people get misguided and misdirected like that split second wise. That's not even us thinking deep as hell. You know, yeah. that's just, you know, uh, <laughs> and there was this guy and I, <laughs> his name was J. Anthony Brown, I think. And he was working on the, he was working on the morning radio show. I think it was Richard Smiley's radio show. Yeah. And he didn't hit the Powerball, right? He was so upset. He quit his job. He was, <laughs> and it was, I know it was like, it was more of a hoax, and, but he was really, really pissed off. And <laughs> even though that <laughs> isn't in the context of, of spirituality, that's how the human race is man they're not taking no shit man <laughs> like you know i can't believe i didn't hit the power ball as much playing as i done done as much, much charity as i done did i done made up with my baby mama and, yeah. you know, and so on and so forth but that's the template and that's what that's what we are man as as human beings man We're just not taking no shit so for you or anybody listening to try and to continue to try and not blame and still be focused and not look for a reward, oh, you are right. You are right inside you. There's <laughs> something inside you that's just, you are right for real. Because <laughs> if the tables turn, you are right. If the tables don't turn, you are right. You're just an all right, you know, person for trying. You know, when a lot of people would say don't have to, a lot of people would say won't succeed, but you're trying. I don't give a fuck if you come in last place, dude. Nigga, you ran the race, baby. <laughs> you ran the goddamn yeah. race. <laughs> I tell you that, I'm, I'm, I'm at the finish line like, you ran the race, baby. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I know we laughed, baby. I was last last week. Shit, come on, baby. <laughs> you know I ain't built, you know I built the run to 1600. Shit. But I'm trying. You know I was going to come in last when I first started running. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So what, I'm going to ask you this. What does the tree of the Sephiroth mean to you? What's that last word? The tree of the Sephiroth? I don't know. I don't know. Tell me the story. Um, out of the Kabbalah, this, the uh, Sephiroth tree, the Zohar. Have you, are you familiar with it? Not familiar to you. Okay. Tell me. Cool, cool, cool. No, I just thought I heard you mention it one time. It's all good. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I've passed so many, I've passed so much literature mm-hmm. and so many different things that, you know, it goes to streams, it goes to fire and things of that nature and veins and things of that nature and to see things without a scientific vision, to see things outside before science took over and was able to look inside the body and find out. Ain't nothing in there. Yeah. I searched it myself. I took an x-ray. Ain't nothing in there. And then that's when 
you know, we start getting real. And that's when things start getting truthful. What are some of the books that you've read, man, that have inspired you? Well, I like uh, I like fiction. I like uh, Sister Soldier. Um, she's one great author. Um, I was really on a book reading kick. Like, um, uh, I say about three and a half, four years ago, I was like really on a book reading kick. Every flight, I'd have a book, and so on and so forth. But I'd say my most favorite author is Sister Soldier. Okay. Because she keeps it real. Um, have you read the book The Alchemist? Can I repeat that question, please? Are you familiar with the book The Alchemist? I mean, you're not familiar with the book. Didn't that become a movie, though? I'm pretty sure there's something similar by that name. I'm not sure if it's based off the book, though. Well, briefly tell me about it. Yeah, yeah, you definitely got to read it. Everybody has to read that book. I think Hmm. that's one that really piqued my interest because a lot of successful people were asked questions like, if you were on a deserted island and you only had one book, what what book would it be? And I know Will Smith said it it would have to be The Alchemist by Paulio Coelho. And um, it's basically a book about a young man's journey to find a hidden treasure. And the book is basically about you and your journey and chasing your dream and following your dream. And once you agree to capture that dream and once you agree to go on that journey, that the universe and that God shifts and lines up and will help you capture that dream and you seeking the dream and you following that path as part of your journey and part of your story. And it's a, it's an amazing book, man. When you read it, it's just like revelation about your life, where you are, what you're going totally. through. And so, so basically totally. every, like basically everything in the book is a, is a metaphor for somebody and something in your life. It's really deep. The alchemist. That sounds good, man. I'm going to check it on out. I'm currently reading, uh, currently what I'm reading is, um, the, um, the trilogy to a book that Sister Soldier wrote. So I'm currently in into that one. Once I finish with that one, yeah. totally gonna check out the Alchemist route. Yeah, totally. Totally deep. gonna yeah. check it out. It's not even a long read, man. You could read it pretty fast. Yeah. Cool. Talking about a lot of your music, man. Back in the day, there was a lot of mention, a lot of songs about the Ouija board. What's your experience mm-hmm. with well, that, it was man? Just one. It was. It was just one. I mean, I think it was something that Easy E, you know, really wanted to to put out there, you know, as something cool and mystifying yeah. about us and so on and so forth. Man, it's the Parker's Brothers game, dude. Yeah. We picked it up from Toys R Us. Dude, we bought it from Toys R Us, dude. <laughs> so that kind of lets you know the, the seriousness yeah. behind some shit like that. And like, dude, we picked it up at Toys R Us. God damn. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Are we seriously in trouble? Yeah. <laughs> I'm calling Toys R Us. He's sick of this shit. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff, man. There's a lot of talk. And people used to say, I know you read the, the forums and everything. They say, well, you know, Bone Thugs and Harmony got their abilities to rap like that through the, through uh, getting their lyrics from the Ouija board and contacting spirits. So there was never really nothing like that going on, huh? Uh, Nothing like that going on, man. Just hard, hard work and dedication, huh? That's what hard work and dedication, man. Like seriously, man. We had such a blessed event. God damn, I done got locked in here. We had such a blessed event that it was just to the point to where it was like, you know, when it's about making it, when it's about dealing with people that were raised by their grandmothers and were raised in and those grandmothers raised them guys in church. And it's about that. It's a whole nother situation from there, you know? Mm -hmm. Have you heard any stories about that, though? Have you heard of anybody getting involved with it and opening up some portals to it, you know? Portals? Yeah, like I know people have said they've uh, messed with different things like the Ouija board and opened up doors to... Because you have a lot of people who are really deep into the occult, and they'll tell you to stay away from that because you're dealing with anything that wants to come through. You're not just saying, hey, I'm going to contact the spirit of so-and-so or whatever, but it's just like, hey, is there a spirit in this house? Will you come through? 
and then there's mm-hmm. these, you know what I'm saying? They're opening up these doorways and um, even if it's in their mind, you know what I'm saying? With these dark parts of their psyche, whatever's going on, man, that it opens up these doorways to some entities that people will open up doors that they don't know how to close, you know? I totally, totally agree with that, you know? I think that, you know, sometimes people, when they do open up those doors, that it could just be, like you said, it could be in their mind. It could be, it could be anything. Mm-hmm. You know, it, the imagination is that. That's how we found God, looking for something other than what's here through imagination. You know, at root basis. I guess with that being said, as well, though, as far as like opening up doors, what I found in my own personal experience is that I found solace in this man because I I was one who opened up those doors years ago right and the scriptures say jesus said that he said behold i open up doors and i close doors that no man can close he says i open up doors that no man can open so that's one thing about it. so anybody listening who have dealt with anything dark who have has anything lingering around them just know that you can call on christ you can call on jesus and every other spirit under that Every other entity, all these angels that we're talking about, they all have to bow to the feet of Christ. So take solace in that. Call out to Christ for help. Put it into any of this negative stuff that's going on in your life. And, you know, what I'm saying that really leads me to your song, man, which was which is still a beautiful song about Jesus. Don't Jesus make you feel good. Your song, Jesus, dude, that's an amazing song that we sing all the time to this day. It's a beautiful song, man. I mean, well, I I look at it like this. When you are just that dude, and when you take it a step further, and you start focusing on that, then, dude, it's like you're faint in a way that others wouldn't understand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you start dealing with all of the people that were set forth on the path of religions and where religions get started. You have some that lead a nation of humans. And you have some that lead a nation of angels. And then you have some that lead a nation of God. And you have some that lead a nation of aliens. All the way up until everything has been covered. And then you can sit back and chill. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, did we cover everything, baby? We are, we good. (laughs) You know? Yeah. So I look at it like that. And, you know, um, I think that we all know that Jesus loved everybody. Anybody that wanted to take the time to just be around, just pay attention and cool stuff like that and, you know, help this fellow. And, hey, let's, you know, let's look out for this fellow over here whatever it may have been, I, I think that that doesn't go unsung. It just doesn't. It, it's, it's something that resonates, and it continues to resonate, you know? And it's the good thing, you know, you cannot deny what makes you feel good. You just can't. It makes you feel good just to say it, man, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. You know? It just makes you feel good to be able to say it. I had, that was my first tattoo. Yeah. You know, it was something... I wanted to do for, you know, just for me, you know, somebody that was there for everybody. You know what I mean? So it meant a lot to me because it was like I can extend my heart out to whoever that I want to and I can care for whoever I want. And even if it's a mission or a duty or work, I can do that under the banner of his love and affection Mm -hmm. for everything. You know, there's there's nothing that Jesus does not cover, whether it's making you do something or you wanting to do something and being stupid for wanting to do something yeah. or being smart or whatever. Jesus covers it. Hey, man, you go be a fool for spirituality if you have to, you know, and so on and so forth. So I think that that's, you know, something that's so important to the human race. What do you what do you what, what do you see right now as far as the animosity towards Jesus and towards people who um, try to uphold his teachings and commandments? So, like right now, socially, 
there's a there's like animosity for you to say you believe in Jesus or you follow the teachings well, I mean, of Christ. Hey, bro, you know, to each are their own. Um, there's a lot of shock value, my love, mm -hmm. in things. Sometimes people say things to shock you, to yeah. get you interested in them. Sometimes somebody will say something so you can go after them, so you can pay attention to them. And that's just human. That's just humans do that. You know, um, you ever gotten into an argument with, your boo thing and she says some shit that she knows is going to hurt you that you told her in safety and security and she breaks it out on you. You know she doesn't mean it, but she said it to get your attention. Yeah, It's the same difference, man, all over the world, man. Mm -hmm. Same freaking difference. One brother tell another brother, you know, that's why I have a job and you don't. You know, <laughs> small things yeah. that help you understand what's going on and what's not going on. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's not ever, ever personal. It's always to mm. get attention yeah. to me. Now, the invested, well thought out, well, this is why I say that. It's like, okay, um, I don't think like you, Pimpin, but you can go on over there because I got the tattoo on my arm and I, I like who I like, yeah. you know? <laughs> Yeah, I I love who I love. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, dude. And if and if if me loving someone makes you not want to be near me, then maybe it's it was for a reason. You know, maybe that is for a reason. You know, and that's just how I look at it. You know, sometimes people are out of your life and taken away from your life because they're not good for you. They're not meant for you. And it doesn't take loving Jesus or, or loving Moses or whomever to expose it. It really doesn't. It's just common sense, you know, and situations. So, you know, at times it's like, well, that's the reason and so on and so forth. It's like an endless amount of variables and, 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 and calculations towards it. You know, of why. But my main thing is it's normally to get someone's attention and say, hey, I can't go no further. If that's what you believe in, I know you're willing to go through whatever to get to, you know, somebody like yeah. me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of see it like that, too, that a lot of people, you know, believe what they believe for a reason. Somebody taught them something or showed them something or maybe somebody in the nation of Islam spent time with them where no one else did. So they kind of had an open ear for their, their doctrine and their teaching or a Christian, you know, might've did the same thing. So it kind of opens them up. So, you know, you just definitely see why people believe what they believe and you don't judge anybody, even if it's wrong, you know what I'm saying? If they believe, you know, something opposite of what you believe or whatever. And then you have to look at that for your own self too. Well, I believe in, in Jesus because, of this and I prayed and got this result and at my lowest point Jesus stepped in and helped me and Muhammad didn't help me or Krishna didn't help me or whatever the case is right that's my story um so I mean what's your story man where was that defining moment to like look man Jesus is the way this is who I need to help me on this walk you know I think my most defining moment will be watching and seeing the reaction of people when I actually sung the song yeah. on Maury. Oh, yeah. And and when I did that and, and it helped somebody, when I actually did that and it helped them, and, you know, Baby Girl was, um, you know, uh, in a wheelchair and so on and so forth, and, you know, we dedicated that moment and that time to him. You know, Baby Girl wanted to see me and said before she, or anything happened to her, she wanted to make sure she said hello to her favorite rapper, and she shared a moment with Jesus involved. Mm -hmm. And that let me know, you know, to a certain extent, the beauty, the love, and what I really, really felt inside my heart. When it's your time to shine, 
and that's who you want to shine with you, that let me know deep down inside there's something about that guy. Yeah. That just makes you happy, and it just it just does something to you. You're just, you know, grateful for his existence. You know, you're just grateful that, you know, he's there. You know, even if he didn't do anything. Yeah. You're just grateful that he was there. And he did a whole lot of stuff for a whole lot of people. Oh, my goodness. I just I took a snuggle. Hell, I, I'm looking for my pillow and my blankie right now. I, I just want to hug my pillow right now. <laughs> yes, sir. Man. Well, look, man, this has been a beautiful interview. I think we ended it on a good note, man. Um, it was a blessing to talk to you. You're one of, if not the greatest rapper. Hats off to you, man. You've been an influence on my life, on my work, and it's just been a blessing to be able to talk to you, man. I'm I'm, I'm super excited uh, to speak with you. Hey, let me tell you, man, I appreciate the avenue. I appreciate the platform because a lot of things that we spoke about, a lot of people, man, it's going to be one or two people out there that say, you know what, I'm going to try this shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? I'm going to try this shit. This shit sounds good. I'm going to try this. Yeah. So I think that we're helping, and I think that we're not just helping our own race. I think that the, the journey and, the, and, 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 and what we, were, we originally were feeling about, you know, spirituality and searching the angelical code and different things of that nature, we were able to address. And, hey, man, I appreciate it, man, and I want you to stay blessed and, like, man, just, man, human race, man, you know, let's keep let's keep doing what we do, man, you know? No doubt, man. Thanks for coming on, brother. All right, love and respect. And so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Busy Bone. Can't say it enough. One of the greatest rappers that ever lived. Amazing dude, man. If you want to hear more podcasts, you can go to mythicist.me or check us out on iTunes as well. So many more good interviews that we've got up there archived, uh, touching on the same subject matter, spirituality and anything and everything in between. Make sure you go check out Busy Bones' new song entitled All I'll Ever Know. It's really good stuff. And if you're interested in the book that we mentioned, The Alchemist, you can listen to it and download it free at audibletrial.com backslash TMP. If you would like to sponsor the show or advertise on the Mythicist podcast, you can do so by going to www.mythicist.me and click on Sponsor the Show for more info. If you would like to support the show financially, you can do that also by going to mythicist.me and become a monthly supporter. We appreciate your monthly support. 